So what do we got? Like uh, like forty minutes, an hour here to wait? Something like that. <laughs> Welcome. I'm the Deadwood Jedi. This is another Raid Shadow Legends video, and I am not in my account today. I'm in uh, Sharky's account, and I actually have him on here because he kind of came up with a very cool system to uh, beat the clan boss. Uh, it's something that I have only seen briefly. Uh, I saw kind of in a stream of Victor TES, you know, the world record holder in Raid for clan boss, uh, kind of played around with this idea. But Sharky really explored it, really went in depth, and has kind of created something that I think can be a wonderful option for many of you. Now, this is pretty champion specific, uh, and it is kind of gear specific too, but maybe in a way you wouldn't expect. Very cool concepts going on here. This is like next level theory crafting type of stuff. So I'm really happy not only to uh, talk about this with him and present this to you guys, but to have him on the channel so you guys can check him out. He does do some YouTube, so you definitely wanna go check out his channel. I'll have a link to that down below in the description and comments of this video. I think we might also, uh, you know, at the end of this, pull a few shards of his. He's got some sacreds. He's looking for a duchess. It's that weekend. And I pulled my sacreds already in a game on video, so I'll have that link down below as well. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go talk about this team. We're going to talk about these champions that you can see here. And then we're going to do a little bit of the run so you guys can get an idea of it. And, uh, yeah, maybe learn something along the way. So uh, let's go meet Sharky. So, as I said, this is Sharky. Thank you so much for being on the channel with me, my man. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Deadwood. Absolutely, absolutely. So we are talking about... So I, I guess I should talk, start from the beginning. Sharky hit me up. He said, hey, I got this great thing that I'm trying with my clan boss teams, working really well. I haven't seen anybody really do this. Are you interested? And of course, I'm like, yeah, well, you know, tell me about it. We'll see. You know, I'm thinking, ah, oh, this is going to be some BS kind of stuff. And uh, turns out it's a very smart approach to beating the clan boss because, you know, a lot of times what we're trying to do is we're running on killable teams. We're, you know, using all, all sorts of mechanics, you know, tanking our champions up as much as possible. And that's kind of what this is, but in a completely different way. We're not, you know, we're not going at insane speeds and trying to get 15 attacks in per, uh, per turn or anything like that. Um, why, don't you, why don't you kind of uh, tell us a little bit about, I mean, I guess tell us what this is. Like, what is it that we are doing that's different from uh, pretty much every other run that's out there? So, uh, first off, I, I, I kind of gave it a name. We're going to call it the Infinity Gauntlet. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> I like uh, it. That's appropriate, I think. The way this team works is you're going to pretty much cover yourself in a shield that never ends, and you're going to use RNG the max. We have tamed chaos on this team. We did the <laughs> undoable. It's possible. And I figured it out. I'll, I'll, I'll let everybody know. We're basically, we're talking about using shields, but we're not just talking about using shields like you get uh, from your shield set or from your champions, but we're talking about making sure that they never fall off of your team and we're constantly growing them. Um, and basically the key to this is going to be uh, Under Priest Brogdy uh, and his ability to increase those shields, which is just... Uh, Pretty bonkers, uh, pretty bonkers skill. We've seen a lot of the like the world record. I think the world record number right now involved having Brogni and having those shields. Uh, you know, just you know, constantly growing them, helping to keep us alive, and basically just adding HP on our champions here. Um, and that's pretty much the foundation of this, right? Uh, that is correct. Um, and what we've done is we are using reflex gear. I found some new mechanics with reflex gear where any champion with a four-turn cooldown is guaranteed 100% to proc one time, turning it into at least a three- or a two-turn cooldown. Uh, with that being said, I was able to use four-turn cooldown AoE buff extenders in this team, and uh, on top of that, uh, I discovered that, or maybe I didn't discover it, but when you have a shield set and a shield skill, they're two separate shields. So when Brogni uses A2, he's growing two shields at once. So he's actually charging for 60% of the damage that he does, not 30. That's, I mean, it's massive. Like, I've seen the run, so I kind of, I already understand how that worked. But, like, the, being able to watch it grow so much is huge. I mean, I run Brogni with my Valkyrie team, and the shields she puts up 
I mean, it's Valkyrie, so the shields are already massive. But then when Brogni goes on, they almost double, really. The size of them goes grows incredibly large. And if you can add a second shield to that, that's pretty massive. And I assume we're going to be using this big guy here, Chris, because I know at the start of every fight, he puts on a huge shield on your champion. So I can only imagine what that, that grows to by the end of the runs here. Yeah, uh, what it really does is it, it banks uh, the shields beyond the bar, maxes it fully, and then you get these extra turns built up on all your buffs, and then as soon as one champion dies, it's kind of like a bank, right? So you have two extenders still alive, and it, and it keeps going and going and going. With four champions, another one dies, it keeps going and going and going. And what I found with this particular team, we're doing a 30% speed increase, we're doing two 30% turn meter boosters, seeing this team take 12 turns in a round in the clan boss at 200 speed. Wow. Wow. That's, that's pretty remarkable. Reflex procs more of a chance than uh, um, Relentless. Oh, yeah, sure. That, would makes a lot, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. Yeah, so you, you, there's, there's all kinds of things we can play. It's a whole new, it's a whole new area to explore, and, and that's what got me so excited about it. Well, I mean, I've seen so many people messing. Obviously, with the calculator, it's a lot easier for people just to mess around with speeds. But you don't see people messing around with uh, the cooldowns, like the reflex gear, um, and like because you know it's my fault, right? I put I put out a speed calculator, so everybody's speed tuning, and I've I've beaten that into people, like, hey, you know, you can't use RNG stuff in this, but um, that is such a big, you know, that's such a big thing that you could do. You can build your champions with reflex. You can put those, uh, you know, those cooldown uh, jewelry pieces on. You can bring in relentless gear. You can use champions like Lanicus and Raglan. And you know, people don't listen when I say this type of stuff, but like I've, I've said it all the time, Raglan's amazing in clan boss. Like Lanicus is amazing in clan boss. You just can't speed tune with her. And if you're comfortable with that, it can be amazing. And this is a great example of that, right? Where you know, you're, you've kind of almost speed tuned with it, right? You tuned your buffs to ensure that those stay on the full fight, but like you don't know how many attacks you're taking on turn 37 as opposed to turn 14, but that's okay because every all the buffs are there. You're protected, and that's really the point of speed tuning is making sure that all your buffs are on and all your debuffs are on, um, and you're able to do that with this team, so it works out great. Like it's not even an issue, you know? I have a picture I had over 80 buffs built up, 80 turns buffs built up on my my uh, team. Wow! Wow! Uh, extra, yeah. Well, you procs that much. You're talking about like Sandlash and Godseeker type champions. Yep my my first team was Sandslash, Godseeker, and Flesh Terror. Wow. Yeah, and and it had that many uh, in reflex gear. It's an ungodly amount. It was stupid. <laughs> I thought the game was gonna break or something when I reached 99. I didn't know if it could go to 100. Did it? Did it go to? And now I'm curious. Did it go to 100? I don't know. Uh, no, it, it, the team died before it lived that long. Uh. It wasn't that great of a team. <laughs> but I, that be, I, it would be a cool video to see how high we can get that number. I can, I can do it. That's I can nuts, it. man. That's nuts. I never. Really Especially thought. because I didn't even have defense on that team. Literally, I was using rear gear with uh, level 50 champs. I just got the speeds okay and put them in reflex, and that's all I did. Yeah, you know what I mean. It was just just in my beta testing when I first uh, started creating it, playing yeah. around. That's how you that's how you do though, right? You just test it out, like okay, let me get to the speeds and see if it works, and then we'll then we'll make it good. You know, um, that's that's nuts though. That's crazy. 80, 80 yeah, it, stacks of buffs is crazy. It's it's literally like Vizier in reverse. It's so weird. I love it. You got you got, yep. you, got you got the old brain oh. ticking now. Hey, try this. It works. You can use. Only two champions in reflex on a three turn cooldown with AoE buff extension. It's enough as long as the beginning setup is uh, valid. So you might, like, one in five times it fails, right? Okay. So what, what you want to do is you want to use two turn, two three turn cooldown AoE uh, extensions and then um, try it out in reflex with the mastery. The mm -hmm. mastery is important because every once in a while you're going to get that, that bonus, right? Right, right, right. right. That'll, that'll help. That'll help the the bad RNG. Mm -hmm. and, Plus, and I have I have that refl that that gear that cools stuff down. I have that those accessories, so I can add that to it too. Yeah. So now you can put in another DPS. Yeah. Now you can put in your Marty or you know your your 
your turbo or whatever the hell you want to put in there. Well, that's great. This is great. So we could we could we could bring this to another level. The, the, I'm telling you, this is stupid. This is absolutely stupid. Infinity Gauntlet. I'm telling you, it's just the way to go. <laughs> Infinity Gauntlet, man. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I'm already thinking. I'm gonna. I gotta. All right, I gotta. I gotta play around. I gotta experiment. So I'm gonna try that out now. Damn. Oh, you got me. Oh, yeah, why did you get me? Oh, I have to really think about this now. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. This is gonna be a fun team. I like it. All right. I'm it's... gonna come to. I'm gonna help you out. <laughs> Five questions. I'll cut. I know who to come to now. I know who to come to. Um, we're, so why don't you tell us who we're using in this fight? So I assume we're using Chris here, uh, and everybody can see he's very, very defensive heavy because that is his damage dealing stat. It looks like he's going at about 206 speed from what I can see there, or 204 speed. Excuse me. Um, who else are we bringing into this fight? I assume. I assume Brogny seems like the natural Absolutely. choice, right? And I see Absolutely you have right. you have Brogny in reflex gear as well, so yep. so he's just go increasing the, uh, the 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 size of those shields over and over and over again, isn't he? That's correct. And sometimes he's going turn after turn back to back. Okay, and then who? And then the other two. I these are the two that I'm most uh, I, I think are just super interesting as champions to bring in. Um, and those are uh, Lanicus the Chosen. Uh, I never see Lanicus in a speed t in any clan boss teams anymore because she's so impossible to tune. She's got for those of you that don't know, she's got an amazing skill kit, right? Just an amazing skill kit. Continuous heal off her A one. Her A two is not only an ally attack ability, which is super strong, um, but it also gives a turn meter boost of thirty percent, like you were talking about, to all allies, and increases the duration of all buffs. Um, super awesome skill. Um, but unfortunately, this A3 here, which should be an amazing skill, uh, gives you increased crit rate, increased attack, um, but it also has this chance of granting an extra turn, and that screws up any possibility of speed tuning because it's a 25% chance. You can't count on it. You can't you know, ensure that's going to happen, so it makes it very, very hard. But um, I assume what's happening is now with the, uh, the skill priority, we can actually lock that third skill out and get more of a consistent run with what Lanicus does. Even with the reflex, it's like all we're doing is constantly extending buffs and uh, increasing turn meter. Is that pretty much like the foundation of this? That's correct, but the concept of locking a skill with reflex, you're targeting the reflex to only proc on that skill. Got right? you. So that's how this works. That's how I'm targeting that, that, that reflex to proc on her A2 to get that um, extend buffs in three turns. Otherwise, Be it wouldn't work. Because the A3 is always cooled down because it's, it's never used, so it's fully ready to go. So it's just the A2 that's getting the cooldown. That makes a lot of sense. Um, wow. And so you have you have a lot of reflex gear. I have, like, I have like none. This is a problem. I'm going to have to start farming ice golems again. Uh, but you got reflex gear on both Lanicuses, and you have everybody at about 4,000 defense. So you really have the defense capped. I assume there's no increased defense buff on this team then? Uh, that's a negative. All we have is strengthen because the other champion we're using is going to be Lydia. Uh, so that's going to okay. be our speed increase, our strength, and Chris will have defense up from his A2. You got Lydia here in toxic gear. She's going to give you the decreased defense and weaken that you need uh, anyway. Your only decreased attack champion then is Krisk. Is that right? That's correct. Wow. Uh, Lydia does the weaken, right? Yeah. Lyd Lydia does the weaken. Chris has a decreased defense and decreased uh, attack, and it, uh, you do have them in the uh, in the support tree. And do you have like skills like arcane celerity and uh, cycle of magic on all of these champions as well? Uh, that's correct, except for I actually just recently learned Lydia. Uh, she I put her in that same uh, mastery. I had to take it out, and I gained a lot more damage. Interesting. Um, what was happening is she was slowly walking because she's doing so many poisons with the poison gear. She was slowly walking out of her buffs, and then towards like round seventy or like sixty, she would finally lose one of the shields or two of the shields. Why, why don't we Why don't we go ahead and do the run, like start the runoff? You can kind of walk us through how this works. Um, in case any In case anybody did miss that, you've got uh, you've got Chris here at two hundred four speed. You've got uh, Lydia here. At 205 speed, you've got uh, Brogny here. Let's see, is it going to be higher or lower? 204 speed. Uh, Lanicus is at one, 203. This, this is insane that you're getting this many attacks at this kind of speeds. 206, like, 
Wow. This like this is fully embracing the RNG factor here. I'm I kind I, I kind of love this team right now. <laughs> I'm like I want to get something like this going. I just need uh, I just need two Lanikists and a Crisk, and I'll be good to go. Um, let's go ahead. Let's let's check out the run. Let's see if we can't get it uh, started. And you can kind of walk us through how you set this up, and then maybe we can kind of opine a little bit about how uh, how the public out there might be able to utilize something like this. I'm not happy about that. We got Force Affinity. This team will still work. This team will still work, and it was still probably one key, but it's not going to do the crazy numbers that I just put up last time. That's fair. That's fair. Um, well, we can we can show the we can show a clip of what what your crazy numbers look like at the end of this. Uh, but this is uh, but it doesn't matter. None of these. All we're doing is putting buffs, not really debuffs as much, just from Lydia and Chris. Really, it seems like, and obviously, you know, we're getting like some uh, some HP burn from Brogni, I imagine too. But so before you start, um, I just want to say that the way I've set this team up, you can hit full auto now. And I've skill tuned it. It's full auto from one click. Wow. Don't have to do anything. So let's go into the skill uh, control tab here, and you can see what I've done. So Lydia does her full uh, her full regiment. Sure. No, no turn no turn control at all. Then we go to Brogni. We're going to lock out his A3, but we're going to prioritize it to go first. Interesting. Because really okay. all we need is to get that decrease or to get the block buffs the block debuffs and the shield up first, and then he's good to go after that. We're not using this ability from Chris at all. I wanted to I wanted to make it full auto, and I've been playing with it. Um, it actually works out better if I go A2 first, and I can skip the increased de defense, and it still does fine. Um, for maximum damage, you do have to manual it. I'm just telling you that it works full auto. That's pretty crazy. Okay, no, I believe that. I mean, we have such big shields anyway. I imagine that once we get in, once we get going, it does it like you know, 50 turns isn't going to be a question. Um, and then we do you lock out Lanicus here. You, I do notice you use this to start. That's to get the increased crit rate and crit and uh, increased attack buffs on our champions. I take it. That's correct. And this Lanicus is going to be going last, right? Gotcha. So. Our other champions in the middle, Lanicus in the front and the back, is the best uh, way to do it. Interesting. Really, you, you just you, uh, the only thing you really need, okay, is to put your three buff extenders going in order. Other than that, nothing else matters. I've had the speeds as far as 15 away from each other. This is the easiest speed tune to tune. It's, it's really not dependent on anything else. Uh, the earlier teams I made, I started off at like 160, 170 speeds, and I uh, increased it all the way up to 200. And every time I increase the speed or defense or attack on this team, the gains are just exponential. Wow. I, all right. But, yeah. That's great. I mean, that's great. Like, be able to make a, a, a crazy hitting, hard hitting, fast team without having to invest a lot of speed into it. I think that's something that's really nice. Let's go ahead and uh, start it off. Just walk us through the beginning of this. I'll take it off auto here. Um, I. Acknowledging the fact that we could do it on auto, let me take it off and then we'll just kind of go in. You just walk me through what we're doing here. As I guess everybody can see, we have both shields up. Chris puts up that uh, shield right at the start of his turn. This is the thing Chris does; it's part of his passive. Um, so we got. It looks like we have. So we have two shields already up, plus the shield set. I imagine is one of these. Um, and so what's yeah. our what's our first move? This A three here with Lanicus? No, uh, you're going to skip the first Lanicus. Go A one. Okay. A1 it is. Okay. Uh, for her, you're going to use, that's Lydia, you're going to use her A2. Perfect. Get the speed going, get the strength out. Yeah, right away. Uh, now you're going to use your A2 on Krisk. Okay. That's the first extension. You can see we get the ally protection out there. That's lovely. And then we start with the A2 here from Brogni as well? Or we start with the A3? Nope. A3. Got you. Get the block, block debuffs and the shield. And then and A3 here with the Lanicus. Yes, okay, sir. that makes sense. That makes sense. Look at those buffs. Now, this is where you might get an extra turn. If you do, it's not a problem. Now you're going to use your A2. Perfect. And this is going to extend right. them again. Give us a 30% turn meter boost. Oh, yep. that's great. So from here, it's full auto. Uh, okay. Should, should we use Chris's A3 here just to get, a, oh. get it? Get yeah. a little extra. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, manual that for the A3. Okay. But so we can just A2 here with Lanicus. Oh yeah, get the ally attack going. Always lovely. Got the A3 going here with Lydia. And then there's that A3 with Krisk. He'll never use it again, but he doesn't have to because the buffs stay on the full fight. 
And he's got 10 buffs on. Uh, I don't know if everybody knows this, but you can only have 10 debuffs on the clan boss and 10 buffs on your own allies. So he's he's full out. We couldn't add another buff if we wanted to at that point, which can honestly cause problems with Crisk. If you don't use the skills in the right order and you get yeah. too many continuous heal buffs or something, it can actually throw things off. But this is interesting. I'm actually, this is the part where I'm really interested in. Let's put on one time speed, watching Brogni increase these shields. Because you're saying his increase will increase both of the shields separately, right? It's not like an overall, the shield total 30%, but he's going to increase both shields by 30%. That is correct. Uh, and the clan boss only hits one of the shields at a time. Interesting. Boom. Look at those. God, they doubled. Those shields, like, doubled inside. That's amazing. Wow. Okay, great. Let me just click auto and watch this bad boy run. Here, I'll move you over to the side here so you're not obstructing as much. There we go. All right. That's impressive. Uh, that's an impressive little thing we've got going on here. And basically, so I guess this is my question. Are we able to outpace the damage that the... Good Lord. The shields just keep getting bigger. Uh, are we able to outpace the damage that the clan boss does uh, with the increased shield going on here? Uh, yes, we are. Uh, eventually. This team, uh, it's not fully built, the gear's not fully ruined, and it's not the best of gear. I mean, you saw it has some rare pieces in there. Um, it's just the, you need the right pieces. You know, it's, it's very dependent yeah. on having the right pieces. Always. Um, once, <laughs> once I do that, this team should be able to run through Ultra Nightmare uh, all the way until the game breaks. Wow. And I've done that already on Brutal. Right now, I hit... 300 something mil and brutal before turn 175 when the game stops okay okay that's fascinating i i mean that's the kind of potential this is this is why i wanted to bring sharky on here because that kind of potential whether we can rec realize it right here or not that's not really what's important like to me i'm really big on the theory crafting on the ideas behind this stuff and the fact that that's the type of potential we're talking about maybe Maybe this team can't do it specifically, but maybe another one out there can, and I, I'm, I would love to see that. I would love to see a team that never loses a shield. You know, base, it is that infinity gauntlet, as you said, right? Just keeping that protection up the full time. I think that's massive. I mean, you can see these shields are huge. That's crazy to watch, and they just keep getting these. They keep reflecting getting these, uh, you know, duration debuffs or duration cooldowns on their on their skills. Like you see it right there. Decrease cooldown right there. And you were telling me that you can actually get two cooldowns in one turn. That is correct. Uh, so through my research and, and observation, uh, the, the, the mechanics are not additive. They're not stacking. They're separate. So you have the mastery cooldown and you have the reflex cooldown. And they can proc at the same time and you will get double cooldowns going up your screen like we saw double growth shields hey so uh the one thing you you said that was really intriguing and uh made me pause for a second you said you have the reflex gear on your champions and then on a four turn cooldown uh it's a hundred percent chance for it to proc and cool down the skill like how how like break that down for me because it says 40 percent chance so like yeah, you you said 100 it says 40 just just break that down for me like how do we get to that that number Uh so what it came down to was uh my studying of reflex gear cuz I wanted it to be good I I as soon as they locked the skills I knew we could do amazing things and I I recognized the pattern okay every four turns I was I was getting one and not four turns but every four turn cooldown champ was going at least three and I and I I kept watching it and watching it in 1X, and I noticed it just does it every time. It makes sense that, you know, something like that will actually get that cooldown. Not to mention, if you have a 40% chance of cooling down a skill every time you take a turn, that's, you know, over three turns, chances are you're going to get that cooldown, right? Somewhere in there, somewhere, somehow you're going to get that. Not to mention adding, you know, the, that those jewelry accessories, adding that cycle of magic. I think what's really unique about this is you can really count on that uh, cool down to happen regularly. Um, and that opens up a lot of possibilities for things we can do. You know, I'm, I'm, I look at this team and I think about all the different champions we could bring in to take this to another level. You know, like the fact that we're bringing in Lydia, like I, I kind of want to bring in Martyr, you know, I kind of want to lock out, I want to lock out the increased defense and the counterattack skill on Martyr and just have her do her A3 and her A1, just do decrease attack 
and decrease defense all day long, right? That's a cool idea. But there's just so many champions that you can do that with. I think it's very fascinating. So Force Affinity, uh, we ran out of shields on Krisk. He's going to die, and the team's going to be over. Uh-oh. Yep. It's probably because uh, Brogny was getting weak hits on his A2. Mm. Okay. Yep. Okay. So he just didn't charge, he didn't charge the shields enough. Now you said that this is the kind of team that can even I mean I, look I, I I stopped it and then I was like you know what let's let, let's see how far this can go because those shields are still huge I mean this is still going to last several more yeah. turns right so yep. let's let's go ahead and watch it see how it goes obviously weak affinity is going to have a major impact for us. Um, but it seems like this team still has a lot of potential to continue going. For those of you wondering, this is a one key team and you know, everybody's going about 200 speed, which I think is pretty remarkable. We don't have any crazy damage dealers in here. Uh, you know, it's just a kind of an oddball team and I freaking love it. Um, but we'll show a clip, uh, we'll, we'll show like a, a screenshot of like the kind of damage that you put up with this team. Cause I, like you've shown me, this is a one key, definitely has one key potential to this team. I will say that, uh, you know, I'm using three magic champs, so the force is a big impact on this particular team. Yeah, I can see that. This is pretty good. I mean, 40 turns, not too bad. I would say, you know, it's easy two-key team, that's for sure. Um, and for something, like I said, that's very outside what the current meta is, very outside what, you know, people are typically doing, I really I, I, I really dig this. Um but yeah, I, I know you just uh, you just did a run, so we'll go ahead and put that up here in uh, in just a second here. Actually, let me let me go ahead and uh, okay. So obviously, Affinity's gonna have a major impact on us when we got over ninety million damage right there. That's that's crazy numbers, my friend. That's pretty wild. <laughs> I will tell you that I am Dutchless. Okay, so let's go ahead. We got eight sacred shards here. Let's go ahead and pull them. See if we can't get a miracle at the end of this video and get ourselves a Duchess. That'd be pretty awesome here. So. Just gonna, I'm just diving in. I'm just diving in. We're going to see what happens, my friend. We're going to see what happens. So you let me know if you get somebody new that you don't have already. This is actually a champion I don't have that I would love to have. It is a bushy, kind of random out there champion. That's a dupe. That's a dupe. <laughs> Wood painted. They were all dupes. <laughs> well, it's to be expected. To, you know, to let you know, I pulled my shards earlier this morning, and... Uh, they, it was a surprising shard pull. I was looking for a Duchess as well. Uh, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but I do have. I re did record it. It's on the Game On video linked in the comment below. Oh, Ignatius, you have one already. I have two. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's such a good champion, ogres. though. I pull ogres. I pull. I pull three or four of ogres. I don't know why. I can't tell you why. My they love giving me ogres. Well, he's a good one at least. Uh, I mean, not that you need three of them, but he is a good one. <laughs> Duchess, Duchess. It is not a Duchess. I'm sorry. Hey, but you got Gory. Gory's pretty cool. Not what you were oh, looking for. Actually, didn't have that. It's nice. That's okay. Oh, okay. All right. There you go. Hey, we got something new. That's always, always something we're celebrating. So maybe not yeah. what we were looking for, but got something new. Um, hey, man. Thank you so much for coming on today. Uh, guys, we do have Sharky's uh, YouTube link down below in the description and comment of this video so please check it out i'm really really thankful that you came to me with this uh i just think it's a really uh kind of next level I idea going on here and i uh, appreciate that man so guys thanks so much for uh coming by today check out that game on video go stop by sharky's uh youtube drop a little uh, a quick like and a sub check out his videos he goes more in depth on this team uh in his own video so if you're really curious about it really want to know more about it that's the place you're going to want to check it out um and uh yeah guys it's been a pleasure sharky thanks so much for coming on man and uh yeah till next we meet hey dead with jedi <laughs>